what is symbolic execution? Symbolic execution is just another way of analyzing binaries. So we can analyze binaries like with static analysis, dynamic analysis, and all the shades in between. Um, what we do with symbolic execution is basically defining symbols instead of using concrete inputs, we add these symbols that we defined before, and then we have the execution path that it's symbolic executed, but in fact, there is no execution going on. Normally, we, def we have a control flow graph or we need to have a syntax tree like this one of the program so that we can actually reason from, from every single step on the program. And all these uh, steps or states of the program need to be stored somewhere, uh, just as we were doing before playing with C3. And in this case, for example, we would uh, have all these states and then we would ask, but I want to read the success. So which kind of input do I need to have? And then we could reason about it and the input would be 32. And that's how symbolic execution uh, have also the backtrack uh, algorithm inside. That you can think about simply going all the possible ways down the, the path or down the abstract, syntax, the abstract syntax tree and then going back to find out which kind of input we needed. That's basically what Z3 was doing for us with the Python bindings in that, in that small snip of five lines. Uh, lots of considerations need to be always very visible when working with symbolic execution. It's fairly easy to explode this algorithm into something very complex and exponential like loops or conditional prints or even like some kind of dynamic memory allocation where you have a symbolic address in the memory, it's pretty hard then and the computer is not going to be able to resolve uh, a memory location that it's a symbolic value, for example. So why do we use symbolic execution and why do we want to learn symbolic execution? Basically, in security, uh, I, I would use symbolic execution the most when I, I have like a path that I want to trigger. Normally, it's a bug or a vulnerability. And I want to know which kind of input I need to have that I can use to trigger that specific bug that I found. So the idea is always to define the conditions and the path for reaching that bug and making from a simple bug maybe a security vulnerability. And with symbolic execution, as I'm tracking all the possible constraints and solving them step by step, uh, I'm looking into all permutations that are possible. And there is no way that, uh, as we talked before about completeness and soundness, there is no way that going through all the permutations that I cannot find the path that is triggering that bug if this path exists. So we need to remember that usually it's an NTP complete because we can possibly test all the, the inputs that we could have, for example, in a kernel. And if you were using it for generating test cases for your fuzzer, be sure that it's going to generate weird, te weird test cases that are not going through the parser if you don't sanit sanitize it in a way that makes sense. For your application, you need to handle all the loops and branches in a way that it makes sense for your computer because the target often contains a lot of code that it's very expensive to analyze, but it, it doesn't need to be analyzed. Uh, sometimes when you use a further, you know already which APIs you want to test or which functions you want to test, or at least which kind of um, assumptions you can take about a huge source base. And that needs to be connected to what you were, where and why you were using symbolic execution.